Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tune Talk with Andy. Now, in today's episode, we will actually be doing something different once again. We will actually be having our first monthly recap of the entire channel. This is quite new, something that I've been trying to explore for a bit, but sadly I completely forgot uh, the whole thing I was planning and I lost track of time. But regardless, here we are. So, this will basically just be me summing up every album we've gone through, every album we've ranked, and sort of how I would rank them in my own subjective tier, as in which albums would I most likely prefer to listen to in my spare time. I will also go a bit in, in depth with which album suits what sort of purpose, as in one album might be good for the gym, another one might be good for when you're a bit melancholic and stuff, another album might be good if you're just trying to vibe. So there are plenty of factors to take into this, but I will be doing my best to speak as freely as possible. All I have in front of me right now are notes of each album with the ranking I gave the album in its entirety. So first of all, the first album that we reviewed was Octopus by Gentle Giant, which actually became one of my personal favourites after my 70 plus albums in one month, roughly. And that album is actually one that only fits the vibe if you're just trying to appreciate some good music. If you feel like you just want to relax and enjoy some nice music, Octopus is one that will get you thinking and one that will actually just relax your mind a bit. You will feel stimulated is the best way I can possibly put it. And as you may know, if you've seen the video, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10, which I do think is a solid rating for it. It actually isn't the number one out of the ones that we've ranked. We have two others on 8.5 as well, but I do have favourites because, of course, we do have a bit of favouritism, but as you guys know, these albums are ranked based on each individual song and not necessarily the album in its entirety. That's just something we comment on after we've done the rankings. So, me personally, one of my all-time favourite albums is Immersion by Pendulum. And they got the same rating as Octopus, 8.5. But then again, there is also the fact that some albums have way more songs than others, so that also affects the rating. So don't take everything at face level. Sometimes you have to go a bit deeper into it, but it does give somewhat of an accurate image as to where I would put an album. So, when we take these albums, and when I make these videos, these monthly recaps, we will be placing them accurately in order of which I prefer the most, and how I think each album fits me best. So in at number one we have Immersion, as I said. It's just one that has stuck with me through bare time, and it never fails to impress me. Songs from Compra Chicos to The Island Part 1, The Fountain featuring, you know, the boy, Stephen Wilson. But yeah, that album has stuck with me through a bare time. I've used this album for plenty of things. My first ever proper listen was just at my computer whilst playing games. But the second time, the most impressionable time, was during a road trip. And that's when I fell in love with this album. So this album, I feel like it can be used for plenty of things. I've used it in the gym, I've used it just in my spare time, I've used it on bus rides to school. I've used it for a bunch of things, but it's my favourite because of all the variety of songs on there. Some are quite similar, but they all have something unique that they add to the table, and they're great. I love them to bits, and they always get me hyped. Next up on the list is probably going to be Octopus. It is also an 8.5 out of 10. And my gosh, man, it's just such a good album. As I said, it gets you thinking, it stimulates you properly. From the advent of Panurge to the last song on the album. It's just this weird journey and it kind of takes you back in time to when this was produced. And you sort of just get into the creator's mind process, I suppose. They're thinking. Gentle Giant, they're a brilliant band, and they definitely know how to produce great albums like Octopus and Acquiring the Taste, which allegedly is supposed to be better, but I think Octopus clears it by quite a bit. But yeah, that's my second pick. Third is another 8.5, actually. It's The Raven That Refused to Sing by Stephen Wilson. This is just the most melancholic album of all time. Stephen Wilson, he consistently kills it, and he's just gosh dang phenomenal at both lyricism and songwriting. So the fact that he was able to produce this album, with the help of some brilliant musicians as well, they might not be known, but they're still fantastic at each role they played. 
and overall it's just this whole melancholic, beautiful, euphoric soundscape and it just gets you into the depth of your mind. This one has the song Drive Home on it and it's such a phenomenal song, it's already becoming an all-time favourite of mine. I also know another person who loves that song quite a bit, but you've seen him on the channel before. And you will have seen it in the video that we both appreciated that song into oblivion. It's phenomenal. Next up, in at fourth, we actually have one that doesn't quite reflect based on its rating. It's in Cauda Venenum, and this is one that has actually grown on me quite a bit. Not necessarily because of each individual song, but rather because of what the album represents and what it is. It's this haunting and ominous atmosphere that just sets you right into this mood that either makes or breaks you. I have been in contact with one person who actually just couldn't finish the album because he felt as though someone was constantly watching him. I feel like that's a bit weird, didn't quite happen to me. I loved every second of it, though it's not an album that I would most likely pick a song from and then just put on another playlist. I need to listen to this album in its entirety. The only exception is Alting Tashlut. Um, by the way, it, this album, I only listened to the Swedish version because that's how it was initially written. And yeah, that song, the last song, the closing track, it's so phenomenal. It's hands down the best song on the album. And as I said during the recording of this, and in the video that you will have seen, if you've seen it, there are plenty of songs that sort of build up towards this epic conclusion. And that is one thing that I really respect about albums such as this. And in Cauda Venenum, they just, they did it right with this one. Opeth really killed it with this one. So I put this one in at fourth. In at fifth, however, we have another Opeth album, it's Watershed, which did get an 8.2 out of 10. But this one also sets this ominous and haunting vibe, but they do it quite differently in a way that, to me, doesn't quite hit the same, but I would definitely understand if it did to another. This is an album where I can pick a song from anywhere and just listen to it in my spare time. The album in its entirety doesn't mean much to me personally, although don't get me wrong, it's phenomenal. But songs like Burden, I, I'll happily listen to that outside of the album. And then there are of course other songs as well that I will gladly listen to, that I don't need much context for. In that seventh, however, we have Gent Is Not A Genre, and this is actually the most recently released album of this list, I do believe, and it's by Periphery. This one was actually one of the biggest shockers for me personally. I didn't expect this album to be as good as it was. Prior to listening to the album, I had only heard Wax Wings before, and I did love that song eventually, though the vocals seemed a bit, you know, emo-esque in the beginning, but eventually they grilled me and I started to appreciate each layer of their songwriting and production overall, and ever since listening to the album, the song Silhouette, which is, in my opinion, the best song on the album, has stuck with me ever since, and I do listen to it really frequently, to be honest. So I feel like it being in 7th is quite, quite accurate for me personally. In that 8th, we have the Norwegian band's album, The Congregation, and yeah, it's by Leprous. This album, I had high expectations for Leprous, and they did somewhat deliver. It's not a phenomenal album, but it's still good. It's solid overall. I would say it's probably, it's definitely top four Leprous albums for me, but might even edge it towards top three. Pitfalls and Aphelion, I'm yet to rank those for you guys, but I will do that in the near future. But yeah, this album might actually be third for me because it's really good and it does provide a lot of good tracks on it. But I'm still not emotionally invested yet, but that might be because I haven't really gone far enough into it, I haven't gone deep enough, and I feel like if I listen to it a bit more, there could be something there, but then again, some albums are just meant to be appreciated, whereas others are meant to be felt. And I feel like this is one where you just appreciate the musicianship and you move on to the next album. This is one of those for me. Next up in at 8, Recordings by Porcupine Tree. This album was also quite surprising. Not because I wasn't familiar with the band, because I was Porcupine Tree, I do know them. I had already listened to Fear of a Blank Planet, In Absentia and Signify, I believe. And then I went on to Recordings and it was phenomenal. There is a song on there, I can't quite remember its name, 
I will search that up. Found it. They have this song called Even Less on it, and it's phenomenal. As you will have seen, I gave it a 9 out of 10, and that is simply because it's such a phenomenal song. It gives you this proper depth into what Steven Wilson and co were trying to create. Porcupine Tree, it's really a make or break band because their earlier stuff is quite mellow and just psychedelic, but they do have these albums every now and again that are just so phenomenal. As the ones I previously mentioned, Fear of a Blank Planet and In Absentia, those two albums are really highly ranked for me personally, I adore them. And this album is no exception, Recordings is phenomenal, I did give it a 7.5 at the time, and I feel like that's an appropriate rating. I did give The Congregation a 7.6, so it kind of does actually work in that order as I ranked them. Quite lucky, I guess. Now in 9th, aka the last album for this month, the last one is Meteora. This is probably because there were a lot of songs on there that I didn't really care for too much. But then again, there is the one song, Numb, which I'm really invested in, both emotionally and if we're basing it off of nostalgia and what that song has done for me personally. And, well, the rest of the album did deliver quite well. I did give it a 7.5 out of 10, so it's good. Do not get me wrong. But I'm still not invested in the album as a whole. It does have some good songs. does have some mediocre songs as well. But, never get me wrong with this. When we do these monthly recaps, being bottom does not necessarily mean it's a bad or the worst album. Like, it's shite. It's awful. Not at all. I like all of these albums. We will eventually reach an album that I do not like. Uh, I'm not sure when that happens, but we will have a guest on that. But yeah, Meteora as an album, I am not attached at all. I have no sort of connection to that album. But I do, of course, as I said, have the connection to the song Numb. But I mean, who doesn't? Most of us have listened to it. Right, that will be it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys have any albums or artists or bands you would like me to listen to and rank, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I will gladly listen to anything, to be honest. I'm kind of addicted, can't lie. Have a good one.